Hello to some Genshin Impact. I thought I'd try something a little new. Because of a few reasons. The world of Genshin is big. And there is lots to do. Much more to do than I can ever show on my streams. There's a lot of side quests that just Water comes in many pop up the every now and then. Mondstadt's Where well, I'm not sure if they are worth showing off. Or if I can just do them off screen without being worried about them. For example, Truly Mouth Watering. Where I and Paimon were attracted by the aroma of roast chicken. That sounds like fun. But can I do this off screen or will I regret it? Because it's very funny. I don't know. And I don't want to look up quests before doing them because that just spoils the fun. So I will record myself whenever I do quests now. And if they are fun, I'll edit them together and upload them as a video. This also helps with a new feature that was introduced to the game in the commissions. Because up until now you always had to do four quests every day. Four daily quests that refresh and are random every day. But instead of that you can now do different things every day instead. For example, you can open chests in the open world or collect oculi or do regular quests like world quests or archon quests or character quests to fill out these three, ah, uh, three, yes, these four slots to get essentially the same prices as if you would do the four daily quests but instead you're actually progressing in the game instead of just wasting your time doing inconsequential inconsequential quests not everything you do is worth a full slot on these four for example a chest will only fill up half of this some things will fill it up even less but usually doing a full quest chain, like truly mouthwatering today, should fill up all four of them in one go. So that's a good way for me to not waste time in this game and possibly have more fun playing it than I already have. But that's enough explanation. I will be doing aftertaste. more of these now in Inazuma, for days if the it works well. A depth of flavor unlike any other. So let's Sumeru's water, meanwhile, start be truly mouthwatering. Has a rich and complex I did the first profile, step of this quest because be as many quests, fully it. they just start if you get close to where they are. I went to this beach, apparently because I was smelling chicken. And there were some enemies that were also smelling chicken. And I beat them up. Only to find Henry. Who... Is in a little bit of a predicament. Seeing this... Pretty much inspired me doing this. Because... I don't want to talk to this guy off screen but I don't know if his quest will be interesting enough so Henry what's up or down thank you thank you thank you so much you're my saviors I Henry will never forget your kindness let's focus on a more important matter I'm once curious how you ended up here those crabs must have been attracted here by the aroma of roast chicken. Paimon is attracted here by that too. 
No, that's different. Those crabs were probably choosing between me and the roast chicken as the starter. Just the thought that they might have chosen the fresh starter gives me chills. Sounds about right. The fresher the better. Hey, I was asking about Henry, not the crabs. Who else would be buried in the ground? Grace from a different game. So, do you need help? N naturally. Um, no, I mean, no, don't, do not help me. Well, oh, okay, we heard you loud and clear. Let's go, leave one. End of quest. No, wait, please. Huh? What's up? I, I, uh, <clears throat> here's the thing. Please listen to me carefully. This is a brand new beauty fad. Yeah, you're looking very stylish. You don't need to shout. Paimon's ears hurt. Very not. I am perfectly. I'm a perfectly sane person. I'm adopting a beauty practice that is scientific and healthy, which is why I buried myself in the moist sand with my own hands. Please leave. Do not block my sunlight. The sun is setting. Uh, let's go. Since you're curious, then you leave me with no choice but to explain the magic of this skin care treatment. Um, the clam worms in the sand can clear the. Ah, so loud. Ihan, what is up with this person? Simon can't understand his words at all. This is really weird. Is that so? What do you think? Let's check the vicinity first. Eh? Are you leaving? Yes, we'll look around and come back later. Okay, off you go. Investigate the vicinity, like this chicken. Speaking of which, why would the B-Rose chicken here? Don't look so very. This is the beaut this is the latest beauty trend. Did Henry bury himself with the shovel then? Spontaneous sure have a, a strange bunch. How would he bury himself with the shovel? But then the shovel would be here and he over there. Hmm, it looks like a strange machine. And it's broken too. You are not part of this investigation, but... Well, those two are suspicious. I hope you're leading me not too far away. Oh yeah, right here. Just to demonstrate. What wish to find. Hopefully the excitement of opening a treasure chest has at least made it a worthwhile experience. Yes, surely a worthwhile experience. This chest filled up this slot halfway. Hello. Hey, don't leave Paimon in this awake, in this awkward silence. Hello. What a beautiful day. About the person over there. What person? I don't know the person you're talking about. We are just taking a walk. Yes, that's right. We're just taking a walk. A walk taken by us. Two totally ordinary people. What a beautiful day, and what a wonderful thing walking is, don't you think? Taking a walk is totally normal. I'm sure you understand. Uh, what are you guys even talking about? Did you hear someone calling for help? A man is buried in the ground over there and almost got eaten by crabs. What? Something like that happened when we take walks. On such a beautiful day. Gets eaten by crabs. That would be really funny. Uh, I mean, a real pity. Shame. We won't let this happen. I mean, we can't let this happen. If you run into something like this during our walk, we will not be bystanders. I mean, if. What are you guys doing here? Taking a walk. 
like we said, taking a walk. You really didn't notice anything weird? No, none at all. Yeah, none at all. Except that the two of you are interrupting our walk. Taking walks is very personal. We do not like being interrupted. We suggest that you find a good place for walks. The Fontaine of Lucine, for instance, is a pretty good place. The Fountain of Lucine. This is where we take walks. I mean, where we feel the nature. That's why we don't want to be interrupted. Goodbye. These two are pretty strange. You don't say. Hello. We are taking a walk. And we hope that you will not interrupt our walk. Surely I would never do such a thing. I will take your tree. Don't doubt me. I buried myself with my very own hands. This is the latest beauty trend. Are you also taking a walk? Uh, Lihuan, any thoughts? The walker duo. They are obviously not taking a walk. The skin is grilled to perfection, fragrant and crispy. The sizzling fat inside is releasing a thousand aromatic compounds that speak of tenderness that melts in the mouth. It looks delicious. So, was the chicken put here to attract the crabs for him to get killed? Almost ate Henry's head or the roast chicken. How do you even manage to bury yourself like that? Yeah, that seems impossible. The latest beauty fad and a very weird attitude. Why did he have to scream and, and shout then? No, that can't be it. Okay, those two did not bury him with the shovel, I guess. Burying roast chicken. Okay. I see. Henry tried to bury the roast chicken with his shovel, but ended up getting buried by crabs. Really? <laughs> I see. Henry wanted to lure the crabs with the roast chicken. Are you sure it was Henry? Did he shout so that people other than us could hear him? Speaking of such people, they are probably... Fearful of the walker duo. Henry is afraid of asking for our help because he is scared of the walker duo. So the reason why the walker duo makes Henry scared is... Henry was buried here. They were the ones who buried Henry. Hmm. Ah, uh, I've done. I'm, I, this is the latest beauty trend. Ah, uh, when did you? We are taking a walk. Taking walks is a form of exercise. Exercise involves movement. Movement is what brought us here. Did you do this? So what if? Oh, Hunter, I remember now. Take a good look at her. That's the person he told us not to mess with. Right, right. What are you whispering about? Nothing. We're just taking a walk. That's right. We're just taking a walk. If there's nothing else, we'll... Keep walking. 
and walk to other places. Wait, don't you have to do anything scary to me anymore? The lesson has been learned. You know what I mean. What lesson? Nothing I mean. Roast chicken is dangerous. It invites trouble. See it as a valuable lesson. Let's go. But roast chicken is... The board. Forget the roast chicken. We should continue our walk. We'll ask Sonny to treat us to roast chicken. Thank you. Thank you so much. I knew you'd understand. Seems it is exactly like what Li Huan said. Let's help Henry out. But digging you out is a really exhausting job, so Paimon will take the roast chicken as payment. Huh? Uh, alright, fine. It takes you a while to help Henry out of the sand and take the barrel off him. Oh, he's in a barrel, in addition to being in the <laughs> sand. You start enjoying the delicious roast chicken with Paimon. Henry seems as if he's about to drool, but he holds back the desire to have a share to keep his promise and maintain his dignity. However, seeing Henry trying really hard to look unaffected, Paimon offers to share the roast chicken with him. The chicken is crispy on the outside and gives out an irresistible oily aroma. Yum yum. Freedom. Ah. The sweet taste of freedom. Though not as satisfying as a roast chicken, freedom sure is sweet. So what does the board that you are holding stand for? Hmm? Oh this. It represents protest, of course. Against what? Hmm? How should I put this? The, they are the ones who buried me. They did it to stop me from working hard, which is why I want to protest. Wait, why do they want you to stop working hard? Can you keep a secret? Of course, your secrets are safe with Paimon sometimes. And yours are safe with me too, but I'm afraid I can't tell. Hey, are you making fun of Paimon? Let's talk about something else then. Okay, what's with the barrel you you were wearing? Is that a form of protest as well? Huh? That I don't know. Before they buried me, they put this barrel on me. A deed born of the twisted tastes, I'll wager. wager. And why did you end up buried by them? Because they are terrible, terrible people. They just grabbed me for no reason at all and buried me in the sand. They wanted me dead. No reason at all, huh? Really? Uh, of course, didn't you see? I was literally buried in the sand. If they didn't want me dead, why else would they do it? Hmm. That makes sense. Lihuan, what do you think? Broken machine. A machine with an unclear purpose. Seems like it's no longer functioning. Is it related to the situation here? Chicken is crispy on the outside and gives out an irresistible oily aroma. Yum yum. Ruly mouthwatering. Title drop. But Henry was worried, so he couldn't eat it. Though it feels kind of weird, the roast chicken was placed in front of him because... Crabs. Almost ate Henry's head or the roast chicken. The barrel that the walker duo put on Henry's chest before he was buried. Under such circumstances, the barrel prevents the sand from applying pressure to the chest so that Henry would not be suffocated. Which is to say, the walker duo did not want to kill him, so their true intention was... They mentioned lesson before leaving. Seems like they wanted to teach Henry a lesson by burying him in the sand and letting him see the chicken he couldn't reach, but why? Because he broke the machine. Judging from the clues from the scene, the reason could only be this. Used roast chicken to catch Henry. <laughs> it 
for a Paimon, she might have fallen for that. I'm using everything except the correct thing. <laughs> Indeed. Use Henry to catch crabs. Yeah, I see. The walker doer wanted to use Henry to attack crabs. What? So they didn't intend to kill me at all? Ah, you guys are really observant. That's right. I was the one who broke the machine. But why did you break the machine? Hm. Why indeed, because... A long time ago, I lived a poor and miserable life. It was really... I was really depressed. Then I met a guy who gave me a healthy drink that lifted my spirits. He was really kind to me, so I wanted to pay him back for his kindness. One day, I had my chance. He introduced me to some very rich people and asked me to help them. All I did was menial work such as collecting mechanical parts that belong to the Fontaine Research Institute. The rich people paid me a pretty sum for their score, for those scores. Chores. God oh, damn it. Well, sounds pretty awesome. Right? This time, they asked me to find this strange machine. Take the core out and deliver the core to them. See, now we're talking about cores, not chores. I can both repay my bro and make some money. I've got to give, give my all. But those terrible people, perhaps they hated seeing me working hard to change my life for the better. They interfered with my work and warned me against delivering the um, precious components to my employers. But I wouldn't let them win. I took the job and protested against their behavior. And as a result, like you said, I was taught a lesson. Oh, poor you. But is this job of yours really so well paid? course. This is one of the reasons why I didn't want to tell you why I'm protesting ever since you saved my life. Not as much as saving your life, I mean... I also thought that since you two are really observant, I might as well just tell you the truth. You can see it as a collaboration. Such strange machines have been deployed above ground and underwater. It's easy to spot such machines. They all produce a peculiar light around them. Handle it for me and bring me the specific cores inside it. Should be seven in total. After it's done, we'll split the earnings 50-50, Dale. I take 70% of the earnings and 20% must be paid in advance. Uh, fine. But I really can't give it to you in advance. I'm still waiting for everything to be done so that I can get paid. Hmm. But what do these machines do? They destroy the environment. These machines are evil stuff. Destroy how? How am I going to know? I'm not a member of the Fontaine Research Institute. Anomalies have already occurred, so it has to be hazardous to the environment. Well, that sounds reasonable. Every time we see any supernatural environment during our adventure, there's bound to be some trouble that we have to deal with. Yuan, why don't we help Henry? Aha, great! It's settled then. Bring me seven cores. Let's become rich together. Do I have those already or are they special? You unquested my quest. What do I want? Labor rights? When do I want them? Now! Hey, I brought the cores you wanted. Hmm? Let me see. Mysterious core, taken from a mysterious machine, although it appears to be a gear. It is in fact gear shape, a gear-shaped core. Very mysterious. I am missing one of them. I also don't know where I got them. That's a problem. That's a problem in wanting to complete this quest. I'm gonna look up the locations and where I got those. Be right back. Hello, I'm back, and I am at approximately the location of the final one of these cores. I also found this little island, which has an oculi and a chest that I have not gotten yet. 
and after the part of the quest we did so far we have almost filled out a whole daily sheet so after clearing this island I should be clear Mind the side effect. Abandoned property belongs to whoever finds it first. So, it's legally yours now. Why do I love artifacts? Ah. But also, yes, that was enough for completion. Let me quickly sort this out. Just one quick upgrade should be enough. Maybe two or three or four or five. Apparently in the near future this is gonna get expanded so we can throw more trash into these artifacts in one go, which I am very much looking forward to. Okay, that should be enough for today. So anyways, what we are here for is underwater. This machine there were seven of those all over Fontaine. I guess I can quickly point out where they are or where they were. Let me quickly open the map. There was one here around this part in the Belo region. There was one over here by waterfall and the barrel region one over here by the sea one over here i'm assuming underwater like the one we are currently facing the other three were all above water there is one here where progress is written right at the re and one up here by that bridge and apparently, I found all the other ones accidentally and didn't know that they were related to this quest. But now we have one more to destroy. Which is good, because it means I can show off how to destroy them. Usually we need to take out the enemies around them. Or at least it makes it easier to deal with them. And then, you can see that this machine has energy on it. Either Numa or Yusia aligned. When attacked with a corresponding element, it will spawn enemies or sometimes a platforming challenge when above ground and then it switches to the other element the dark element could easily be affected just by Nuvelet's own element but he can't do anything about this so we need to find the corresponding element somewhere in the vicinity or a character that has that element. I'm assuming this echoing conch might be of help. There is something here to dig. It's an enemy. It's a different enemy. It's money. 
and he can't sh stop responding. It's the Numa block. That's the wrong one. It's the one we would need if we don't have Nuvelet on the team. And it's the Usia block. That's the one we do need. Did, did I activate it? I think I did. I did not. Now it is floating around us. And more enemies. No. No more enemies. Oh. Looks like we collected all seven mysterious cores. Well, that was easy. Back to Henry. He is not that far away, so let's just swim. I should have brought more Uzi in. Well, there is one here. But usually... These things don't have anything too interesting inside them. Please don't attack the enemy. Well, it had a Sealy inside, so yes, interesting. I'm gonna try to not get too distracted during... ...these videos. Oh. The Sealy has found its place. We need multiple Sealy to do anything here, so never mind. Distraction avoided. Hey, no fighting. Hey, I brought the cause. Of course. Hmm. There we go. Seven cores all told. What do you need with them anyway? How should I know? My boss just said that seven mysterious cores from these mysterious machines would be needed. And if I can get them, I'll make big Mora. And well, this will do. I've arranged to meet him here and report to the situation. So you can just ask him yourself. In any case, I'll need him to settle his bills with me before I can give you your share. Ah, fine. You say so, we'll wait. For a while. Dear Henry, how are things going? Oh no, it's for Tui. Very well, boss. I've got it. The seven mysterious coins you asked for. Anyway, let me introduce you to my partner. Um, what's your name again? Um. Uh. Wait, you know each other? Great, so this is how things went. Ah, uh, it's Lee Juan. Why is she here? The boss turns to flee, but is suddenly captured by Hunter and Turner, who come from out of nowhere. After a while... Ah, mercy. Have mercy. Huh. These two are pretty skilled. Don't worry, boss. There's no mortal danger here. I'm sure of it. Except the crabs. Indeed, indeed. No one's in any danger at all. For now, anyway. For now? So what comes next? How do you wind up as a roast chicken? Or something else altogether? Well, that's all up to you, boss. The chicken's gonna get all soggy in this rain. Yeah. How did the two of you end up here? After we had the honor of meeting you previously, we decided to tail Henry. Huh? Wait, why me? Actually, why was I the target in the first place? I was just doing my job. 
machines you dismantled were devices used by the Fontaine Research Institute to monitor and optimize water quality. Oops. Huh? Weren't they meant to produce pollution? The cause you dismantled contained the most advanced central components and hydrological data in Fontaine. As such, we hope to acquaint ourselves with your trading partner. Huh? What? Why? Gasp! Shock! We were tricked! You lied to me, boss. Did you know you were making me destroy such important things? I, I didn't mean to. I'm only the lowest rung on the... Hmm? What did I hear about you not meaning to do something? Would you say that again? I don't think I heard you clearly. Yeah. Oh dear. This boss must be tired. He's even fallen asleep with his eyes open. How can you see his eyes? Ah, uh, this, this wasn't our intention either. Not about that. We've decided not to pursue the matter. R really? Will things be okay like that? Just need the cause and the data with them to be holy, uh, to be whole. The machines themselves are ancillary. High up that it, say that it's fine, and that we shouldn't tangle with you regardless. Hmm? What's that about tangling with me? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I mean, would you look at that? It's us, out on a stroll. And fancy us meeting you here, huh? What lovely weather. And a lovely coincidence too, yeah, it stopped raining. Alas, all encounters must come to an end. And so too will ours. It's time to, it's time to say goodbye, I fear. Just allow the beauty of such a meeting to linger in your heart. Or perhaps... Forget about it. Who knows? It might be better that way. Huh? So we are alright. Would you prefer things to be otherwise? Oh, Archons, no. We are alright. Of course we are. Ah, I thought I'd met a good person with whom I could turn my life around through labor. Alas, people of ill intent remain the dominant majority. Hey, Henry, lend a hand, would you? Huh? I mean, it's a mighty shame, but this good-hearted boss of yours seems to have lost his wits. We're going to need someone... Hardworking. Reliable. You know, a good friend who hopes to change his life through honest labor. That's right. We need a good friend to help us take this nice man to our safe house. There we can speak with him at our leisure. Of course we will express our gratitude in Mora. Oh, sure. Count me in then. Thank you. Thank you both. And thank you too, um... Li Huan. And she's Paimon. Thank you both, Li Huan. Paimon. My life really did change after meeting the two of you, it seems. No need to thank us. Just work hard, Henry. And don't get fooled again, alright? Yes, I won't. I'm going to work hard. Become a rich man. And then have others working for me. Uh, Turner and Henry pick the unconscious for tools out and take him away. Well, Paimon sure hopes that Henry's life will turn around. Hang on a minute. What about the pay Henry was supposed to give us? Oh, there's the pay. He left it neatly packed away. Let the record show that I verbally consent to relinquishing these items into your possession. Thanks for consenting, Nuvillette. But yes, that's that's the end of our first quest I'm gonna be doing like this. I'm just probably gonna record one a day and then edit them together into one video. Depending on how long they are. So this Probably continues right after this. Pointed this guy out on stream a bit ago. Let's see what's up with him. He looks. Like he's having a time. 
but that's just standard procedure. He also sounds like he's having a time. Just can't believe it. Would someone really take a camera into the amazing just John himself and simply strut about taking pictures of everyone and anything? It is ridiculous. Everyone knows, everyone should know that that is how secrets get leaked. It is common sense. If common sense was common, Mr. Yoon, Yoon, Joan, then the Mason Jess John could simply disband tomorrow. I shall leave this to you. Have them sign the document, just like I taught you, and return it to me before the weekend. I still have to handle the expense receipts. Kasix keeps hassling me about it. But, Mr. Royalty, just who should I be looking for? We don't have any office specifically in charge of cameras. Uh, I trust your judgment. Now hurry up and take care of this so we can each really enjoy the weekend. I'm going to go take care of other things. Up to it, kid. Yes, sir, Mr. Royalty. Royalty leaves in a leisurely manner. What are you doing? Ah, huh? hello, hello. It looks though you are not a member of the staff here at the Mason Guest John. I am currently busy with official business. Should you have any inquiries, please ask Miss Cornelia. She's right over there. She will provide with a chair and a cup of tea. Please have a seat and I will come find you after I'm done. What's the big rush? Uh, it's it's actually a simple matter, but dealing with it is quite complicated. The office I work in has received a notice instructing us to draft a letter to the other officers. Content was something like staff are forbidden from bringing cameras into the Mason Guest Show and taking pictures, except for work purposes, in order to avoid leakage of secret information. Thus telling me about the letter's contents constitute leaking secrets? No, certainly not. If anyone really had used a camera to take a photo of documents and it resulted in a leak, then this would certainly be a confidential, ma confidential matter. However, maybe someone will use a camera to take a picture of documents in order to leak them. Is not a secret. After all, that's a possibility that everyone is aware of. I feel dizzy. Think about it this way. If you are guarding a secret, then the secret you are guarding certainly cannot be revealed. But the fact that you are guarding a secret itself may not be considered a secret. After all, if even the fact that you are guarding a secret is considered a secret, then you will fall into an endless cycle of keeping the secret of keeping secrets. Your wording is an endless cycle. I'm curious who is in charge of this matter. That is where this matter becomes complicated. There is no office in the entire Mason Gas John that is directly charged with managing cameras. Mr. Semain says that I should ask Mr. Gettineau. Their work is related to confidential matters, and thus they should be the first to be made aware. But Mr. Royalty says that I should ask D4, and he is in charge of all matters related to the staff of the Mason Gas John. Were we to make a new rule that all staff of the Mason Gestion cannot bring cameras to work, we'd have to let them know. Wow, that's complicated. Why are there so many different people responsible for different things? What happens if you can't remember? That's why each of us carries a thick notepack. Though, even with the notes, I'm still not sure who I should look for now. Hmm. This is a matter involving personnel. Let's look for D4. That's exactly what I thought, but he has quite the explosive temper and, though he is quite reliable, his sharp tongue is sure to leave a mark. Ah, uh, but he must be informed of this matter as soon as possible. Well, I guess you'll get to see for yourself, please this way. How did we get involved in this? Why? Yon, let me guess. Bad news? Sir, you are correct. It is not good news. To be precise, it is secret news. So it is. 
Very funny, Eon. So what is the secret news? It's a secret. That is true. Something like this could easily happen. After all, most of the staff here at the Mason Gesture are very sensible to how confidential different confidential different documents are. Did nobody tell them about the security classification system? It's all thanks to Gatineo and his people. All the documents here have to be reviewed by them. They decide the security classification of the document and stamp it. Sounds like a good system, right? But the folks in charge of reviewing documents came up with a truly ingenious way to save time. Just stamp secret on every single blasted document that comes their way. Last week, K6 went to the Opera Epicles for a speech and talked about recent performances. I remember. It wasn't a long speech and lots of people were there. The text of his speech was even in the newspapers. Since the speech was given in front of everyone and everyone knows it already, how can something everyone knows be a secret? But no! Even so, Gettine still, had, still just had to classify it as secret. Maybe there was some important information inside it? As if! He classified the draft that was released to the public as secret, but didn't bother with any of the previous versions. Kasex never writes his own speeches. The entire text of every draft is written for him by someone else. The only changes he makes to the entire speech are to sign his name and change a few irrelevant adjectives. adjectives. And all those older manuscripts that he didn't edit, of course they are lying on Kasex's desk. Nobody cares. If Gettinay actually cared one iota about protecting secrets, why doesn't he classify those as secret too? Perhaps it's a precautionary measure? Oh come on, they just want to save time. To Gettinay, the best way to protect secrets is to make absolutely every trivial little thing a secret. That way nobody knows what the actual secrets that need protecting are, not even them. If you want to hide a glass of water, the best way is to dump it in the lake. Great plan. Nothing can ever go wrong. And if you want to hide a glass of Fanta, are you going to turn the whole lake into a lake of Fanta? A lake of Fanta? <laughs> Paimon wants to go swim in it. Fanta's really tasty, right, Lihuan? I think you might get really sticky if you did that. We'll go get some for you in a bit. Really? Then it's a deal. No backsies. So this document. Yun, this matter doesn't concern personnel. So you've come to the right person. Does concern personnel. Before we can begin official Well, before we can begin officially No. I'm not wrong here. Before we can officially begin our work, we must know if it's a glass of water or a glass of fanta we are hiding. That's a nice typo that completely threw me off. But first, you must let Gatine ascertain the security classification, just like I said before. As we are already old colleagues, I won't cause any trouble for you. Our office will absolutely support and assist with this matter. Very well, now go find Gatine. This will affect all the staff, so I must go and inform the relevant people in advance. But Mr. D4... And he left. That's Mr. D4 for you. Quick to anger, but quite clever. Nothing we can do but look for Gatine. This way, please. Silence! I, I would wish there was silence. I just clicked the wrong button though. Eun, I think I, I'd meet you here, you little rascal. Mr. Cassine, I was just looking for you. There's something you should know. What is it? I just finished reading today's Steambird and the Mason Guest John wasn't mentioned. Yes, this is a secret matter. Oh, now that's a rare sight. Someone besides a journalist who can tell if something is secret or not. Uh, 
Ah, it appears our DeFore is an exceptionally diligent journalist. It's almost as if he charged into my office demanding to know the security classification of this document. I completely concur with his opinion. This matter certainly must be reviewed and classified first. But the matter of camera security leaks is quite large and concerns the entire Mason gesture. My office alone cannot ascertain the confidentiality. I must go to the other officers first and allow them to review it. And once they are all familiar with the matter, we then can proceed. For example, Kasex. Huh? But this order came down from Mr. Kasex. And it's even more imperative that he be aware of how we are dealing with it. Come on, lad. Let's go find Relite, and then meet with Kasix. Huh? Wait, Mr. Gatinay! He left, but I can still talk to him. Surely that's not... This is a confidential matter. As such, it falls under your jurisdiction. Well, in that case, can we keep affairs we handle confidentially from you in the future? Even on personal related matters. I guess he stood behind me. So I could still talk to him. Okay. Those are two different things. Quit shifting to goalpost. Well, it's certainly not up to us to decide whether or not they are the same thing. It looks like I've messed things up again. Scary. They're arguing. Nifan, how, how about we get out of here? Adults, are, uh, adults arguing is scary. Gentlemen, gentlemen, calm down. There's no need to be upset over such a trifling matter. This is no trifling matter, Royalité. This is a matter of grave importance that impacts the entire Mason gesture. I dare not act rashly and decide it on my own. So it is. There's nothing trivial at all about protecting our secrets. I don't think there's anyone in the whole Mason gesture more suited to handle this matter than you. Please, relax. Why must you gentlemen argue about who is in charge? As I see it, there is no need for anyone to be primarily responsible. You don't even need to cooperate. What? Huh? I fear I do not understand your meaning, Realité. I don't quite follow your train of thought, Realité. You two are both gentlemen with a wealth of experience, and now that we are, now that when dealing with something complicated, we must first divide it into simple things. The responsibility of preventing people from leaking secrets using cameras should logically fall on Gatine. But you need not do anything extra, just continue catching leakers as before. As for information everyone of the policy that camera as for informing everyone of the policy that cameras can't be brought into Mason Gesture, this troubled task must fall to 44. Nobody else in the Mansion Gesture can clarify the new policy to the staff. We have no capability to enforce it. Nobody listens to us. Ah, you don't need to worry about that. Leave enforcement to Gatine. What you need to do is not notify, but propose. The bigger you print the proposal, the better. Put it at the entrance, and be sure to print the case of the last camera leak below it. That should be enough. That sounds exactly like before. How is this any different? I, I don't understand, Mr. Reality. This way... I agree with this proposal. Excellent! It's very clear, clean and clear. Oh, what? Proposal? Ha, <laughs> that's easy. Then we have reached an accord. After Yun rewrites the draft, I'll bring it to both of you to look over. Now, let's each get back to work. I'm very sorry, Mr. Reality. I really messed this up. Don't blame yourself, Yun. It's not your fault, at least not completely. Why did they suddenly accept your idea? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. That's right. Why did they suddenly stop arguing? It looked like they were about to start a brawl. That's because you don't know what those two gentlemen truly care about. Do you think they simply didn't want to take one take on extra work? Of course not. They simply didn't want any other officers to get involved with their work, especially when they themselves would be held responsible. As long as you understand this, 
it's easy to remove the source of their discontent, and then they are quite willing to do the work. But your proposal, they still have to take responsibility. Gatime and D4 are both experienced bureaucrats, and they are both painfully aware of some simple truth. In a large organization such as the Mason Jazz John, everyone has to take some responsibility. It's the only way to make sure everything can continue to operate smoothly. Negotiate the size of the responsibility, but everyone must take part. part. Anyone refuses to do so, well then, they had best pray they never run into any trouble. Don't think too much of it, Yoon. Don't come to understand all this someday. Right now, the important thing is to go rewrite a proposal and bring it to me, got it? Yes, Mr. Royalty. Ah, looks like another all-nighter. Guess I should grab a coffee first. Your health is important too. I know that, but forget it. No buts. Ah, sometimes I wonder if there's a point to all this work I do. I type, produce documents, chat and run errands, day in, day out. As an objective observer, Lihan, what are your thoughts? Further observation required, citizen. Fine. Perhaps you can give me an answer after you've observed a bit more. If you're interested, come here tomorrow. We can talk again then. As a gestionnaire here at the Mason Gestion, I've been drowning in a sea of work. Perhaps you could tell me, as an objective observer, what's the point of it all? Carol thinks that's pretty complicated. How about we check in on him again tomorrow? I hope he doesn't burn out from all this work. Oh no, it's raining inside. This quest is a lot of talking. <laughs> In fact, it is only talking so far. Ah, Traveler, it's nice to see you. You don't look so good. You have bags under your eyes and it seems like you can barely speak. You should take a break. I, I can't rest. I stayed up all night and... I stayed up all night last night writing drafts, but none were good enough. Time for yet another rewrite. If you have any official business you require my assistance with, please wait a moment. You can pull up a chair near Mr. Rolite. Perhaps he even has coffee. I, I must get back to writing. Ah, uh, no using to my dear colleagues it is certainly not formal enough. Mr. Rolite. How are you doing? Traveler, glad to see you've come back for another visit. Coffee? Now that you mention it. Yeah, Paimon wanted to ask too, but but those guys were so loud and Paimon didn't dare talk about anything else. Oh, I should have read the other part too. And I thought I was going to be kicked out. Why? Why? <laughs> no need to worry. The guards let you in, so why would we take it upon ourselves to chase you out? This is also an example of clear delegation of authority and responsibility. Hello, Traveller. I am Semaine. It is a pleasure to meet you. Hello. And you are? Semaine used to work in the courts as an assistant secretary. Due to some rather messy circumstances, he was transferred back to the Mason Gestion. Using his logical and precise deductions, we were able to find solutions to many previously intractable problems. Please, that's a bit much. I merely transferred over my previous work experience and used the value of certain things to infer the importance of matters related to them. Though in practice countless matters that cannot be precisely measured will crop up in the course of work, but in these cases, applying Royalty's well-developed axioms of human interaction is of great assistance. And that means what now? 
Put simply, when dealing with Rook, Semaine is quite skilled in considering all sides and their states and makes everyone feel like they're important. It's like balancing scales. And if the balancing act is simply impossible, then I can tip the scales with the weight of words. Yun sure seems to be working hard. Can you help him? Yeah, it seems like he's about to pass out. This is a path that all must walk sooner or later. Should I help Yun write the document, he will not remember this lesson. His head and heart are filled with idealistic fantasies about what working in the Maison Gestion is. But fantasies are for the young, not for gestioners. But I simply don't know how to write those documents. You're quite direct. Alright, so what business brings you here? Tell me. I'll see if I can... Oh no, panic. Alas, all is doom and ruin. Mr. Royal is hey, do you have spare keycaps for the typewriter? As I was typing, I suddenly discovered that a keycap was missing. I have no idea when it could have. Did you already have a look nearby? Maybe it just fell on the ground. Or maybe it's stuck in a book. Or sandwiched between documents. But you already checked these possibilities. Or maybe it's in a pen holder. Or your sleeve. Or your hair, or in a teacup. I've looked everywhere. Even my pockets and my shoe bottoms. I've searched all over, and it's nowhere to be found. My, what a tragedy. Very well, then you should go ask Cornelia. If we do have spares for things like keycaps, then she's the one you need to file a request with. I should just go buy one myself. It shouldn't take Estelle long at all to make a keycap. My dear Yun, do you really want to spend your own money? The typewriter and its keycaps are public property, and the property of the Mason Gestion. Filing an application with Cornelia is the proper procedure. It really doesn't cost much at all. This is not a matter of how much, this is another matter of authority and responsibility. Repairing the public property of the Mason Gestion should be paid for by the public accounts of the Mason Gestion. You pay for this with your private funds, and do not file a claim for reimbursement. Then, when expenses are audited at the end of the year, it will be unclear where the money came from. Fine, fine, I'll go find Cornelia right now. Even buying something is such a pain. Is even paying for things this annoying? This is actually quite normal around here. Please, this way. Let's go find Cornelia. Why do we have to go with you now? Buy a keycap. Hello, Mr. Eun. May I help you? And hello to you too, Miss Cornelia. Do we have any spare keycaps for a typewriter? Excuse me? My typewriter is missing a keycap. So I would like to apply for a replacement. If there isn't one in stock, I would also work if you could reimburse the purchase of a new one. Expensing a keycap, that shouldn't be a problem in principle. Sign your name here please, just rewrite requesting reimbursement for replacement keycap due to typewriter malfunction. And then sign your name and office. Very well, I can get the keycap today, right? I really need to get back to work. Mr. Yun, have you ever applied for reimbursement for the purchase of public property before? Being reimbursed for work expenses is not at all like you imagine. You don't simply buy something and reimburse it. We need to compile all the reimbursement receipts and documents on a monthly basis, create summary reports and then submit everything to the Mason Cardinal for approval at the end of the month. This Approval progress, a process is related to the approval and payment of salaries for the entire Mason gesture. If the amount expensed is too late, then the Mason Cardinal will even need to submit it to Monsieur Nevillette himself for approval. Payments can only be officially sent after the review is complete and if everything is signed. If he has any questions about a certain expense report, the staff member in question must submit a written report. We are just 
preparing to submit our first batch of reports, which we will do sometime in the next few days. Oh my, this bureaucracy is killing me. You mean, if I am unfortunate enough, then I might require Monsieur Nivellet himself to sign off on that keycap reimbursement. Such are the rules, Mr. Yoon. And since the total expenses for this month are large indeed, he may very well be required to audit the reports. Monsieur Nevillette. Wait, isn't that your chief justice? Paimon, you know him quite well by now. But it's just a keycap. If we are making him sign for it, it just doesn't feel right. Is there some other way? I think so too. After all, it's only a keycap and we don't trouble him with it. That is true. There are other ways. Yes, you could go buy a keycap yourself first, then I can provide you an official acknowledgement of debt in, you, in the public accounts. After all, the reimbursements have been processed and the payment process completed. The amount owned, owed will be paid to you directly from the public purse. Excellent, then let's do that. After all, a keycap doesn't cost much. I can pay for it. Please sign here, and you should still write requesting reimbursement for replacement keycap due to typewriter malfunction. You're going to purchase a replacement from Miss Estelle. Yes, indeed. Is anything wrong? Then I will take the IOU to Mr. Royalty for him to sign, and then take it to Miss Estelle to verify the purchase amount. But you don't need to worry about that. Just hurry and buy your keycap. I'll take care of the rest. Thank you so much. You really are the best, Miss Cornelia. I'll go and buy it right now. Come on, Traveller. It's time to leave. I, I, I ask again. Why am I part of this? You don't need my help at all, do you? <laughs> I, I'm just running along. Sharing your pain. <laughs> I'm gonna jump off a building. <clears throat> Eon, what is it? You seem to be out of breath. Estelle, please, I need a keycap for my typewriter. You should have something here, right? Of course, but typewriters have so many different keys. Take a look and see which one you need a keycap for. This one. This is it. Here's the money. Thank you, Estelle. Last time you said you'd like to go boating with me, Yoon. Hey, Yoon! Did you at least get the... Why, did, why didn't you give the keycap to me, instead of just taking it yourself? What am I to you? A newly purchased keycap, though it does not quite fit in with its counterparts already on the typewriter. Well, let's just make do for him. This is a pain! Did you at least get a receipt? Or does it not fall under your jurisdiction? Now, the keycap installing minigame. Great, now we can finally continue working. This proposal must be finished today. Thank you so much. When I have time, I will certainly treat you to an excellent meal. Are you free tomorrow? Come find me here if you got the time. Wait for me to finish work and we can all go eat a tasty meal. Then, I'll be waiting. But finish your work first. You're right. I must work faster. Wait, what's the next sentence? I should have written everything down. Oh boy. It continues. Of course it continues. So this is the duality of quests in this game. 
either you're having a nice bit of action and a fun story, or you are being made aware of how hard it is to work in an office. Eun, are you done writing? I'm hungry. Eun! Ah, what? Yes, yes, I finished. I finished writing. It's me. Did you finish writing it? Oh, it's you. I, I must have fallen asleep. Sorry. Mr. Realite and Mr. Semain stayed with me half the night. With their guidance, I finally managed to finish the proposal. But I was just too tired. I thought I'd just close my eyes for a bit. I never thought I'd sleep until now. I need to go find Mr. Tails first and have him stamp his proposal with the official seal of the Mason Gestion. And then take the proposal to Mr. D4 for his stamp. And then we can begin officially printing it. And then we'll be done with this. At least it's not as complicated as before. Yeah, in any case. I've heard that Mr. Tails has introduced a brand new type of machine for fixing stamps. They say that it's convenient and made with confidentiality in mind, and that they plan to use it throughout the entire Mason Gestion. Take a look, Mr. Royalty even gave me a key. Every, de every department must use this key to activate the stamping machine. Anyway, it all sounds pretty formal and official. Why don't you take another nap? It looks like you can barely walk straight. Anyway, it's just getting a document stamped, and there's that stamping machine to do it. There's no need to rush. No, we cannot afford any more delays. Let us go right away. Like you said, it's only a stamp. It shouldn't take too much time. Unless there's a long line waiting for the usage of the machine. Go get the stamp! Tails, can I get my documents stamped now? Yes, of course you can. Did you bring the key and please sign here too? I thought we wouldn't need to sign now that we've got the machine. But about that, the machine must still be operated by someone, so you still need to have to sign in, don't you? It's a guarantee. But this machine is perfect for maintaining secrecy. Without a key, even I can't start it up. But the documents here... Uh, yeah, it should be put the documents there and make sure they are properly aligned. Then insert the key into the keyhole. Is this that automatic stamping machine? It looks really ordinary. Like this and just turn the key. Wait a second. Just hold that pose. Don't move. I'll take a picture. Not afraid of leaks? When we first deployed these machines, Mr. Kasik specifically specified that we must use a camera to make a record of everyone that came to get documents stamped. Oh boy. I need to move. Can't have this document in the frame. Recently, someone said that there's going to be a new document promulgated here at Amazing Gesture that specifically addresses secrets leaked through cameras. I don't want to be the first one to be made an example of. Ichuan, let's go wait outside. If we are in the photo, maybe we'll get sucked into some kind of baloney involving leaked secrets. Okay, I've taken the photo. Please start up the machine. Time to key already. Why isn't it responding? That's impossible. I just repaired it. It can't be broken again already. That's also something that happens at the office, isn't it? Printer just doesn't work. That's odd. There's nothing wrong with it. We insert the key and try again. Turn it off and on again. Okay, here goes. It's not working. Tails, think of something. Maybe you didn't align the document properly. You need to fit the document to the markings. There are hidden trigger mechanisms inside. Does the document have anything to do with the machine not starting? Of course it does, otherwise how could the machine know there are documents waiting to be stamped? This is an automatic machine after all, I'm not operating it manually. Oh, for the love of... 
fine, fine, I'll make sure it's properly aligned with all the markings. Yun takes out the document and places it back. It's no good. It's still not working. How could this be? The last time I gave it a little smack and then it started working properly again. Then I'll give it a whack. It appears we have no choice but to try it. Are we getting close to the point where we resort to prayer to fix and to try and fix it? That's true. We can still pray, can't we? Lightly tap the machine. The machine replies to you with complete silence. The auto stamper, 3000! Put a bit more oomph into this tap. The machine seems like it's too lazy to even care about your efforts. Smack it so hard that its later inter iterations will feel it. The machine breaks its silence and lets out a rusty, annoyed sound. As though a very sleepy person just fell out of bed. I thought this is a new machine, not some old cranky crank. Oh, what's that sound? Don't tell Paimon, the machine completely broke down. And then, as if the machine sleepily found its slippers and stumbled over to turn on the light, it begins to operate with a whir and clank. It, it's finally working. The auto stamper is well worn, but it works slowly and methodically. With several people on the brink of despair gazing at it intently, the machine slowly drops a stamp onward, with all the speed of an elderly tent tortoise climbing a cliff. The stamp, having taken its first step onto the paper, seems to stagger around on the document before meandering slowly about and finally setting down to, less, to rest. Finally, the machine shivers and shudders and begins to slowly retract the stamp. Ha! I told you it would work! I truly don't understand just what's so great about this machine. It's called automatic, but it's far slower than just doing it by hand. But it is perfect for maintaining confidentiality and secrecy. Look around, even if you wanted to. Couldn't take the stamp out and use it for our own private purposes without permission. Don't act so smug. What if the machine completely breaks down and Mr. Kasix isn't here either? What then? Hmm, well, it will still be okay. I have a backup key. To open up this machine? No, to open up a box in Mr. Kasix's office. There's a backup stamp in there. <laughs> Oh no. Traveller, let's hurry up. We must bind and staple this document so we can deliver it to Mr. D4. I can't wait to be free from this nightmare. Me too. Boy, me too. Okay. We have all the stamps, the document has been bound and stapled, and all that's left is to give it to Mr. D4 and we'll finally be done. Today I'm going to get a good night's sleep and forget about all of this. Then I'll take a day off and go find Estelle. Mr. Yoon, do you have a moment? No! <laughs> yes, what is it? Now why did the reimbursement get approved so quickly? No way did the reimbursement get approved so quickly. That is not... That it did not, but Monsieur Neuvillette sent someone to me and had me come ask you. Why are you expensing a single keycap and not an entire typewriter? <sighs> because... Well, because a single keycap fell off, that's all. Why would I need to expense an entire new typewriter? You know, that does make sense. Perhaps, but our list of items eligible for reimbursements includes typewriters, not individual keycaps. As such, keycaps are a brand new payment item. <laughs> Therefore, you must submit a written document to Monsieur Neuvillette and explain in detail why you're expensing that single keycap. Why does it feel like some kind of bad joke and not actual government business? Is that really necessary? It seems... Very ridiculous. So you want me to to write a separate report to the Chief Justice explaining how I lost a single keycap? 
The Mason Cardinal said that it was a request from Monsieur Novillette himself. As if the Mason Cardinal says everything is a request from Monsieur Novillette himself. And no one dares test the waters and see if that's actually true. Come now, Yun, come down and listen to me. As a questionnaire of the Mason Gestion, orders from the Chief Justice are an imperative, carrying the full weight of the administration. Simply put, you have no choice but to write it. Not that this is a bad thing, you know. You can use this chance to show off your handwriting to him. Not everyone gets a chance to make a separate report to him. But I... Uh-oh. Hello, friends. Good news. Just caught someone leaking secrets with a camera right-handed. A sterling example of a negative behavior that we shall conclude in the proposal. And as for this criminal who knew the law yet knowingly violated it, is in fact the very person who reminded everyone not to use cameras lest they expose secrets, Mr. Kasex. Him? It's because of him that Yoon was all up night writing the proposal, and now he's been caught breaking the rules first, no less? He used the camera to take multiple photos of his office and then distributed them to reporters. One of the photos included his own min... Minutes from meetings. And the public has now discovered the contents of the minutes are widely different from what he said in his previous speeches. Rumors are swirling like mad and it appears that Mr. Kasix's office is about to become the biggest joke in Fontaine. Again. Wait a minute. What do the minutes have to do with the speech? Almost all of the contents of the speech were agreed upon in the meetings recorded by those minutes. Of course, they are related. So why are they so different? Oh, that's actually quite normal. The purpose of the meetings and the minutes is to tell us exactly what content cannot appear in the speech. Kasex himself hasn't got the foggiest notion of what he's going to say and doesn't even have his own ideas. He is completely reliant on being reminded by his subordinates. Wait, wait, so where is Mr. Kasix now? He's Kasek. He's awaiting investigation in my office. After all, not only did he leak secret documents, but he also caused quite a storm in the city. I think he may have to stay in there a while. But what about my document? I finished writing it. It's all stamped and up ready and I... <clears throat> hey now, it's okay, you wrote it. It will get sent out eventually. It wasn't a waste. Calm down. Yun, Yun, are you there? Mr. Semen, you're finally here. Please help me think of something. Don't talk about that now. Your keycap. Have you already expensed it? You think? I even had to write a report to Monsieur Neuvillette himself about it. Oh, dread. <laughs> Take a look. Is this that keycap? You... Where did you find it? It was under my desk. Just as the cleaning staff was sweeping, they accidentally swept it over. Someone saw it and put it on my desk. I thought it was a keycap from my own typewriter at first, so I put it away. But today I took a look and I realized my typewriter wasn't missing a single keycap, so... This nightmare. When will it end? Li Huan, what really is the meaning behind my work? Ah. Eon! Eon! Ah, this is all my fault. If only I'd found the keycap earlier, things wouldn't have turned out like this. How is this issue about the keycap? Hello? That's right. Everything's a complete mess. Eon didn't even know what to do. Atene and Defor have also just vanished. What's going on with these guys anyway? Yoon cares about the meaning of his work. Yoon doesn't know what the point of his work is anymore. Ah, that kid's always thinking about those sorts of things. Point of work. Such a grand topic can't be easily explained in just a few words. You'll only heap more pressure on yourself by constantly worrying about such issues. Well, do you know the answer then? No. I've never e ever even considered it. 
I just work. It's for me. But I do think about it now and then. I have my own way to deal with stress. If you really want to find the answer, perhaps we could find some time to talk more. But right now, I've got to buy some fruit and go see you. Now that's the main matter, and no mistake, I'm also going to go help Eun apply for sick leave. He really needs to rest. Great, we each have our task, that's the way to get things done. We'll see you later then, Lee Huan. Huh, that's weird. Where did I put that sick leave form? Has the nightmare ended? I think it has. <laughs> Witness Yoon's work travails. Boy, we most certainly have. Please tell me that constituted a whole day's worth of... Thanks. I have no words. I just have no words. Mic drop. 